hi guys and welcome back to my channel so today I'm going to be doing a video on the top five books that I have read this year so far um, as some of you guys would probably know I hadn't been reading for the better half of this year and then quarantine started and I really got back into it and I just decided that I wanted to continue reading I love reading I just had a hard time managing it while also finishing up college so I haven't read a ton of books this year I think around 25 or so which is low compared to other years I've read over a hundred books before but it's okay I'm not mad at it I'm just like rolling with the punches this pandemic has been affecting all of us in so many different ways and so um I'm glad that I actually have read some books this year that I can talk about and so I thought I would talk about the top five books that I've read. I've read a lot of really great books. I've read in the past couple of months I've read a lot of five stars which I don't give out terribly easily but I've uh, just really enjoyed a lot of the books that I've read so I figured I would talk about them today. So let's go ahead and get straight into the very first book that I absolutely love. The first one that I'm going to talk about is one that I actually did not give five stars but I do think about on a like almost day-to-day -day basis. I think about it all the time and almost want to reread it. I know a lot of people love this one as well and it really just put me in the summer mood, gave me what I wanted and I just I like I got what I came for and I think that's really important especially in romances and that is The Unhoneymoon by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren, they just do such a great job with like creating these dynamic romances um, where you get two different characters who come from different backgrounds or I love the hate to love thing um, and it's done so well that it's it's to me it's so believable and um, I'm really invested throughout the entire story. So if you don't know this book is about a girl named Olive who is going to her sister's wedding and at the wedding everyone gets food poisoning from the seafood but because she has a seafood allergy she does not eat the seafood at the buffet because she doesn't eat the seafood she doesn't get the food poisoning and so she is one of the only people left to be fully healthy after her sister's wedding except for this other guy named uh, Ethan is the groom's best man and brother and so they both end up not getting sick because they just didn't eat at that buffet but because of that her sister says that since the honeymoon is already paid for, or the all expenses are already paid, um, and she doesn't think that it should go to waste, she tells Olive to go with Ethan so that they can enjoy the honeymoon, have like a nice breather from life, and just to kind of go off to Hawaii for um, a fake honeymoon. And so this kind of starts out with a haters to lovers trope. You get a lot of witty banter between both of them. They have this little feud going on. Well, sometimes the banter and the way that they interacted and why they didn't like each other seemed a little bit far-fetched. I still enjoyed it because I think that they do such a great job with witty banter and it really just makes me laugh. Like I laugh out loud when I read their books, especially this one. Um, and you get to see a lot of stuff on Olive's side as a really hard-working woman who is kind of struggling to figure out her next job and get a job. Although she's incredibly smart, it, she's just not dealt the right cards and all of the cards do not fall in place for her so she sometimes has a bit of difficulty having things go her way um, and Ethan is a little bit more like straight to the point kind of gets what he wants um, and they complement each other so well I think you should read this because it is I think will be a great um, ending to your summer it will take you to Hawaii and I mean who doesn't love Hawaii Hawaii is gorgeous I just wanted to be in Hawaii, secluded, living my best life, drinking pina coladas and like just like away from the world. So I loved this one. I gave it four stars, but I do think about it all the time. I don't really know what made it four stars instead of five. But honestly, the more time that goes on, the more times I think about this book. So maybe I'll bump up the score. Who knows? Pick this up. If you like Christina Lauren, if you like some romance, if you like some haters to lovers, this is definitely for you. Next book that I think about also on a daily basis and really can't get out of my mind, I recently read for The Reading Rush and I'm so so glad that I ended up getting to it because I have just, 
I heard nothing but great things about it and knew it was one that was going to be really important and um, enlighten me on a lot of issues that I don't personally have to deal with. Um, and that is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This book is a masterpiece. I absolutely was in love with it. I could not put it down. It was just so, so good. The writing, the characters, chef kiss. So this book is about Stella and Desiree and they are living in this very small town in the south called Mallard and one day they end up deciding to leave and run away from their mother and their hometown that they grew up in um, to go live different lives and they both end up not talking to each other for a very long time and end up having families um, and one of the sisters Stella decides to also pass as white um, in New York in her community no one knows that she's actually black but she's getting by with a white husband and has a daughter um, and this is about the struggles that each of these characters deal with with colorism with racism with um, trying to find your identity and what that means to each respectively um, as well as kind of community and um, relationships with different people I think this book not that I have any personal experience with this because I, I don't, like I, I don't. Um, but this was a really enlightening um, view into a world that I don't personally know a lot about but have I'm very interested in learning more. Um, and I just think, I think Brett Bennett does such a great job at um, exposing these hardships for each of these women. Um, and you can really feel the um, pain and the struggle that each of these women have when trying to live in America in the 50s, 60s. But that some of these issues are still prevalent today and so I just think this is such a great pick for um, a really important time that we're living in right now um, and I just I love Britt Bennett's writing style I think it's so beautiful captivating and I I just I felt these women we also have some great trans rep in here which I wasn't aware of before I picked it up but was pleasantly surprised by um, and just a lot of really great themes to talk about today so pick this up five out of five. I even annotated it, which I don't normally do. I just couldn't help myself. There were too many moments um, that really struck me. Um, so I loved this one. And I can't wait to pick up The Mothers, also by Britt Bennett. I had seen that in the past couple of years and just never ended up picking it up because I didn't know what it was about. Um, but I'm thoroughly excited because I think it's going to be wonderful. The next book that I read I also read during the reading rush and I ended up listening to it on audio and that was The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This one was such a pleasant surprise. I stumbled upon this on, on Scribd and I had heard a little bit about it but didn't know too much um, but I was just intrigued once I saw um, the cover of the book and then I decided to look into what it was and it sounded wonderful so I decided to pick that up and absolutely loved it. This is about a boy named Michael and it's almost like a coming of age as he navigates through life trying to figure out his mixed race identity um, while also trying to figure out his sexual identity um, and it is just a fabulous book. I just was I was so into it. I wanted to know everything about Michael. I wanted to know all that he was going through. I just thought it was so beautiful. It was lyrical. It had such a great flow to it but also really delving into important and deep topics um, and I just loved it. I also was so excited because um, Michael has this dream of being a drag queen and I, I grew up watching Drag Race and I just I think drag queens are so interesting interesting and um, I think their craft and their art is so so awesome and so I was excited to see some of that in this as well um, and yeah I just loved this it felt like such a piece of someone's heart and um, going through Michael's life with him while he did have struggles he also had um, some really happy moments where he um, kind of came to terms with who he was and his identity um, and his race and um, yeah I just love this and I'm so glad I got to it. I would definitely recommend it. Um, I am looking forward to reading more by Dean Adam. This next one is also one that I stumbled upon on Scribd. I had heard of it but didn't really know much about it and had heard really good things so I decided to pick it up and listen to the audiobook and that is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. I didn't realize there was another Christina Lauren on here but 
she's killing the game they're killing the game um this year for me i guess so um this book is about two boys one is a senior in high school and the other is a ta for his class and the senior boy i forget his name hold on tanner who is the senior in high school he is in this class seminar where he has to write a novel by the end of the semester and um the ta sebastian is kind of there to help him out help him with ideas because he is a published novelist um and so they begin Begin to form this relationship um, and as their relationship progresses Tanner gets a little bit more and more infatuated with Sebastian and starts to gain these feelings for him but he comes back remembering that Sebastian is Mormon and that he is not supposed to act on those feelings um, towards a man um, and so this book is a lot about self-discovery and identity and feeling comfortable with who you are um, and also addresses religion um, and I don't know much about being a Mormon I don't know much about the religion um, but I do know um, like the Christ Christian religion I know some stuff about obviously where people do not accept people for who they are and who they love um, so I just love this because I thought it gave such a great glimpse into both of these men's lives Tanner is very comfortable with who he is he tells his parents they're very receptive and comforting to him and um, he, he's just comfortable with who he is but Sebastian struggles really deeply to connect with his family um, and especially in light of his his developing sexuality I'm trying to figure out who he loves and if that is okay with his father being so high up in the church um, so there are a lot of expectations made for Sebastian so he doesn't know what to do with this newfound interest in Tanner so glad I picked this one up it had some really deep important moments about religion and love and um, identity but also some really nice moments like sweet moments i just i really wanted them to work out i really wanted their relationship to go places and i also love books that have books in them like writing in them and so this was exciting for me because i just i love seeing like how the class was working and how um he was writing his novel which i'm not going to tell you what it's about but you should definitely read this book if you guys are curious i gave this one five out of five stars i loved it I would recommend it, 100%. Sorry about the lighting, I don't know. The sun keeps in and out. And the last book on this list is one that I am so glad that I got to and I've been meaning to read this author for a while. I've seen Felix Ever After has gotten so much hype recently um, and so I picked this one up to get a little taste test and I loved it. And that is King and the Dragonflies. This book is about a boy named Kingston and he is 12? 12. Um, this is a middle grade and it is about King dealing with the death of his older brother and really not understanding what that means and so at night um, when he dreams he imagines his brother is a dragonfly and he comes to speak to him and give him life advice um, and so this book is a lot about grief um, especially at such a young age um, where it's not fully understood um, and it's also about relationships with his family he he has a bit of a hard time connecting with his family on certain issues, especially about um, the death of his brother. Um, and it also recognizes that King is going through some developmental changes and trying to figure out his sexuality. Um, and he has this friend who he becomes really close with who is not particularly like the most popular kid in the school and gets picked on a lot um, because the kid is outwardly gay um, and they've developed this friendship and this relationship and it was just so pure and so so sweet but also touched on some really important issues that I feel like are forgotten happen to also children I feel like we forget sometimes that grief isn't an easy thing for people to understand especially children if they're not given that outlet to discuss um, death, to discuss grieving, um, and even sexuality. Um, he is a black boy and it's hard for him to connect with his family um, to talk about his sexuality and his race at the same time. Um, so I just loved this. I found it so heartwarming but also so eye-opening to see that um, we need to be having these discussions with our children um, and to let them know that grieving is okay. 
I just love this one. It sits really close to my heart and I want to get it physically because I want to annotate it and read it again. It went by so quickly and it was just, it just made my heart really happy. So. I loved this one and I'm so glad that I ended up picking it up. That is going to be it for my top five books of this year so far. I read a lot of wonderful books this year, but these are the ones that I most think of and most like want other people to read. So definitely check out all of these books. I will leave them down below. If you guys liked this video, you guys can like it and you can also subscribe for more videos. Um, I'm trying to figure out a schedule. I want to do two videos a week, but we're trying to sort all of that out. Haven't figured it out just yet. I love you guys so much. I hope you have had a wonderful day and that you are staying safe and you are well and you're loving each other and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!